Autumn beer. These are Dutch autumn box or herfst box as it's called in Dutch. Perfect pronunciation. And they were kindly sent to me by Thierry in the Netherlands. And five of these beers we actually can't get here in Sweden. I think we can order the La Trappe if we order 25 beers at the same time. And that might be a bit too much, even for me. I actually have the La Trappe triple prepared for another video. But I'm super excited to try this out. I've talked about, you know, that I miss specific beer for the autumn season. And the Netherlands definitely has the right idea. We have Bock beers in Sweden as well. This is a new favorite, Grebbestads Lunator. It's actually an old Swedish classic, but uh, I've just discovered it. The problem is, this bottle might be one of the last in Sweden right now. And then we have to wait for March, I think. And then it will be released again. And that is often the case with uh, the Doppelbox. These uh, dark, strong lagers. They are brewed in the beginning of the year. And then enjoyed late winter, early spring. Germany even has a strong beer festival in March. So I would love for Sweden and other countries as well to copy this tradition. We will compare these beers to Einger Celebrator. Celebrator. Because that is uh, widely available. And I think most of you know how this uh, tastes. But yeah, let's crack these open. Grolsch. Classic beer. But I've never seen the Herbst book. Mm. Oh, it's already dark outside. It's only four o'clock. It is cozy, but I'm a little worried about the video quality. Hopefully it works. Thierry left me a list of some information about the beers. We'll go through them in a bit here. Already a bit uh, of difference in the color. La Trappe. I've forgotten to investigate how to properly pronounce this name. So I'm just going to say it the Swedish way. Ooh. Feisty head. This one is called Brand. He. It's kind of funny in uh, English, right? What brand is it? Brand. Yeah, what brand? Brand. Paler than I imagined. It looked so dark through the bottle. Hmm, what should we do with all the decoration here? <laughs> Maybe we can keep it in front and then spread the beers out a bit. Malust. These were extra difficult to open, it seems. Or it's just not my day. Hmm, maybe the palest of them. I like these kinds of bottles when they are more square. It's kind of unique. We have a brewery in Sweden that uh, does the same. And Jopen. Sometimes I think uh, J is pronounced H. So Jopen. In this case I'm guessing it's Jopen. Bit darker. And Eyinger. This seems to be available the year round, at least. Maybe we'll change places so the glasses in the front. All right, doesn't this look lovely? Let's have a look at Thierry's list. So the Grolsch, this one, quite a big brand in the Netherlands with 15% market share. It is located in the eastern part of the Netherlands well known for their Hoppy Pilsner and a specific style bottle, Bugelfles. I wonder if that's the one with the snapping uh, cork. Let's have a little sniff. Sweet and a bit of that uh, ripe fruit uh, aroma. Raisins, uh, figs maybe. Dark sweet bread and actually a bit of uh, that salami note which you can find in Hefeweizens. The next was Eggens. Very young 
tiny and local brewery from the northeast of Netherlands, where I live. Founded in 2017 and only sells locally, so totally unknown to the rest of the world, even in Netherlands. So that's exciting. Let's have a sniff. Mm, more of uh, dark chocolate, coffee and uh, a bit uh, nutty. Yeah, very roasted, like you have uh, hard roasted uh, uh, dark bread. Smells almost like uh, stout. Next, La Trappe. Only Trappist bock beer in the world. Yeah, I guess the Trappist orders always makes beer that are top fermented. And bock beers are strong lagers, so they are bottom fermented. So I guess this also is the only Trappist lager in the world. I heard someone say that the word Trappist actually comes from uh, La Trappe, that uh, name. All right, next, the brand that is really branded. Oh wait, I didn't uh, smell the La Trappe. <laughs> it smells like an ale. I wonder if they still use the same uh, yeast, but they ferment it longer and with a lower temperature. It has some of that um, sweet banana, gentle clove aroma, and some sort of herbal quality as well. Interesting that they are so different so far. Hello from the editing room. I did some more research on uh, bock beers and they don't have to be, as I thought, strong lagers. Some of them, including the La Trappe, are actually ales. Top fermented and with more fruity flavors from the yeast. So no wonder the La Trappe smelled like an ale. To be correct, the La Trappe bock beer is the only Trappist bock ale in the world. All right. Back to me. Brand is arguably the oldest brewery in the Netherlands, from 1340. Situated in the most southern part of Netherlands. This is a brand that we almost never see in Sweden. This was more similar to the first one, with ripe uh, fruits, uh, red berries. It smells drier and more bitter somehow. If you can smell that, I must compare with the Grolsch. The Grolsch uh, smells a bit sweeter and uh, rounder, like uh, almost more milky, you know? Okay, then we have Malost. Yeah, that's the Weltwachter book. I actually asked Thierry about this. It's an old name for police. In Sweden, we also have an old name for police, Konstapel, which is only used in old movies or for comic effect. You kind of see uh, police with an old uniform, big belly, and the hands behind uh, the back. <laughs> so Thierry writes, Young Brewery, 2011, from the north of Netherlands, and not yet well known. Situated in a former prisoner's village, from the early 1800s. So that's where the name comes from. Let's smell it. Also maybe more similar to La Trappe and Grolsch with the red fruitiness. I think of tobacco actually. Interesting. A little bit of an intense, you know, whiteboard marker. Pen? I know some people call this uh, nail polish, if it's the same thing. It's not unpleasant, but, you know, a bit stingy. And the last one was... Jupen. I actually looked this up, and uh, number four is pronounced fear, like in English, to fear something. So, fear granen bok. Again, perfect pronunciation. Made with four types of grain, barley, oats, rye, wheat malt. Local brewery from Halim, founded about 30 years ago to make traditional beers from 500 year old recipes. Cool. Let's have a sniff. Dark chocolate, coffee, 
some sort of sweet uh, dessert berries, uh, dark berries. It actually smells very similar to the one I showed you in the beginning from Sweden, Grebbestad Lunator. Maybe we actually can compare them in the end. If I want to drink my last bottle. And then, of course, I'm a celebrator. <laughs> there are so many names that end with the to, like the Salvato. But this is one of the most uh, known Doppelbox in the world. It is a bit of that um, chocolate coffee, but actually more of figs is dominating. So I wouldn't say any of these beers are really similar to this one. That's pretty cool if the Netherlands kind of develops their own uh, style. All right, should we dig in? I tried to learn the proper pronunciation of uh, cheers in uh, Dutch. It's similar to the German Prost, but you have the mouth forward R instead. And I'm not sure, I heard uh, a few different versions. Hopefully it's close enough. So Prost, cheers, skål. That's really pleasant. Sweeter than I imagined. It's almost a bit sugary, like they made a beer for, not for kids, obviously, but for women. I'm sorry. But traditionally, men prefer more bitter beverages than uh, women. I can't really find any specific uh, fruits. It's like when you get a sugar-coated red soft candy it's supposed to be some sort of red fruit or berry but it's so sugary that it could be either one there is a bit of bitterness uh, in the finish which also can come from a certain booziness let's see the abv is probably pretty high oh it's only 6.6 .6. it almost felt like a higher percentage punch it's pretty light as well it's dangerously drinkable maybe a bit too sweet and uh, light for me we'll see but let's move on to eggens yeah this was the coffee chocolate one prost very different i got tobacco in the taste but not as much in the aroma and not as much coffee in the taste as in the aroma you have that uh, fruity character where it's so overripe, so you don't know if it's uh, sweet anymore. It's both fruity and uh, dry, you know. Actually, I might look uh, that word up. Ah, stivige, or however it is pronounced, means um, strong. So a strong bok, is it extra strong? Yeah, 8%. But that's strange. The Grolsch tasted boozier somehow. There is some nice smoky note in the aftertaste. Maybe they have used just a little bit of smoked malt. It's also a light bready uh, aftertaste. All right, La Trappe. It's something about the S in uh, Prost. Prost. It's like it's between S and Sh. As you can hear, I'm already an expert. It's so interesting to have that banana sweetness in the mix, but it's still another style. There is bitter orange, also something sweeter like um, dates, not really raisins. It's sweet, bitter and dry at the same time, doesn't make sense. A bit of smokiness uh, late in the aftertaste all the way back in the throat. <laughs> yeah, that was a complex one. Then we had the Malust Weltwachter book. Which one was this? Ah, oh, the one with tobacco in uh, the aroma. Prost. I need to practice. Again, that overripe uh, fruit booziness. But maybe this isn't as strong either. 7%. I wonder where that comes from. I've talked about, in a previous video, about uh, boiled strawberry 
flavor, but I guess it's the same thing as when fruits are so old and overripe that they start to ferment, and that gives a boozy feeling. That bitter orange again, orange uh, marmalade. It's actually pretty malty once you get past the overripe fruit, but more white bread than dark bread is what I get. Okay, the Jopen. Oh, I need water. This was the one with the four types of grain with the, the most coffee chocolate aroma. Prost. Yeah, it's pretty close to a stout actually. Kind of refreshing after all of the other beers. You have coffee, dark chocolate, a bit of sweet uh, milk chocolate, butterscotch, maybe a bit of dates, round and pleasant. And now the most classic of the classic Doppelbox, Eyinge. And then we might say Prost. Yeah, it leans heavily on that figs quality, which none of these beers uh, really had. But that's not the point, right? The Netherlands are creating their own autumn beer style, which I'm quite envious of. But the Eyinge also have bitter orange, some sort of nuts, hazelnuts maybe, a little bit of uh, dark chocolate and coffee, but it's not dominating at all. It's some syrupy sweetness as well. Also round and uh, pleasant beer. But it's not an autumn beer. Now, is there something specific that ties all these beers together? The color is dark reddish, but the doppelbox are usually even darker, like the Einge. So maybe that could be a thing, that autumn box usually are more reddish than uh, brown. Not all the beers seem to be branded as uh, autumn box. I'm imagining it's the same thing as around Oktoberfest, when the interest is higher for different kind of fest beers. Even if they are not originally brewed for Oktoberfest, all the fest beers is on the shelves for consumers to buy. And these beers are probably being more heavily promoted right now than the rest of the year. Some of them are more smoky, some of them have chocolate and uh, coffee, some are sweeter, some are drier. I would say generally the bitterness is uh, low or medium to low, but some of the bitterness comes from uh, the booziness. I think I will actually try to save some for the upcoming week. You don't have to drink everything at once, especially when it's, you know, 7-8% ABV. So I bought these corks. Let's see if they work. Ta-da! I think you even can... Oh yes. It's still some in the glasses. And I will enjoy it to some food now. Thank you so much Thierry for sending me these beers. It was really interesting. If you haven't watched my video about smoked beers, you can do it right here. And uh, remember, drink Respo!